your profession must match your personality. Do, do you know that the highest number of heart attacks happens on Monday mornings because people are going to a job that they don't like? What have you realized about yourself that you are good at? Ladies and gentlemen, the highest form of knowledge in this world is self-knowledge. The, high, the, uh, the foundation of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. How aware are you? Wow. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Oyeni Shogo and I'm known as um, Dr. Shogo. Uh, I'm the first out of four kids. I'm the first one, two boys, two girls. I'm from Nigeria. I grew up in a state called Kwa State. Growing up was fun for me. Uh, my dad being a medical doctor and my mom a nurse. As the first one, I had the burden of taking care of my younger ones. Usually I say, firstborns are experiments in the hand of mothers. So I was the specimen. The other three was fun uh, raising, raising them. I schooled in uh, Kwara State. I went to primary school and secondary school in Kwara State. Then part of my secondary school was in Abuja, Federal Government College. The product of thinking is a decision backed up by an action. So if you're not making decisions, you're not taking actions, you're not thinking. Worry wearies. Worry is like jogging on the same spot. There's a difference between progress and movement. A lot of people are making movement in life, but they're not progressing. I'm a professional uh, master of ceremonies. I'm a certified life coach. I'm also an author. I have a book to my credit. I write. I love to write. I love meeting new people. I'm also an emotional intelligence specialist certified uh, from six seconds in US. Everything begins with an idea. That quote is credited to L. Nightingale. Everything in life, the starting point is an idea. As a young kid schooling in Nigeria, it was excellent, it was fun. I schooled during the era where we had uh, multiple strikes due to conflict between, between association of lecturers and the federal government. But school was fun. I lived off campus while I was in school. Primary school, while I was in primary school, I was made a prefect in primary three. I can't forget. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm still the only one with that history in that school because I was so bright that I was rolling with my seniors, you get? Yeah. Then uh, secondary school was nice. I went to a boarding house. So we did more of staying in the hostel that's uh, coming home. When we come home during vacation, it was just lessons. We do a lot of lessons, read your books. You know, being born uh, in a family that the that father is a medical doctor, the mom is a nurse. Everything was about books, books, books. Then maybe church. A lot of you are sitting on money. But like I said, anything you look down upon cannot profit you. And every gifting, your gift is your lift. Every gifting is for profiting. Now, life in Nigeria and Kenya, I wouldn't use that. I would rather say life in Nairobi and life in Lagos. All right? Now, uh, it's pretty much alike because they are both urban, urban centers, but the rush in Lagos is far much more than uh, the rush in Nairobi. Now, I know that in Nairobi, they refer to other cities in, Nair in Kenya as being slow. As far as we are concerned as a Lagosian, <laughs> Nairobi is slow <laughs> to Lagos. And I love the peace in Nairobi, really. You might not see it, but I love uh, the fact that you walk on the road, cars are not hooting, no noise, everybody is going quietly. And I love the fact that in Nairobi, people walk. You walk and walk and walk a lot. It's good for the health. In Nigeria, it's not like that. A lot of times you are in taxis, you are in buses, or you are in your private car. By the way, the, the city is not built in such a way that we have walkways. Anyway, there are a lot of walkways in Nairobi. Nairobi is beautiful. I love the weather so much. 
How did I get into comedy? Now, by the way, comedy is just by the side. That is not my main. But how did I get into comedy? I found my, I realized that from primary school, I've always been a good storyteller. Uh, uh, especially, you remember, when we were younger, you have the long break and you come back to school. Then they say, uh, write an essay, a comprehension on how you spent your holiday. Oh my God. <laughs> I will write stories of places I did not go. Say, so our father took us to America. From America, we went to New York. We saw the Statue of Liberty. Very well written and believable. So people will come around, you know. So I realized that from primary school I was a good storyteller. Then when I got to uh, secondary school, which is high school here, and university, I realized that people just love to be around me because I'm a very happy person. I am excited, I'm very positive, and I have high energy, I know. So this particular day when we were on campus, I attended the campus fellowship. There was a variety night, and they said, and the pastor said, if there's anybody that can make us happy, you have jokes, come out. Nobody came out. Then I came, I came out, I held the mic. From there, I spoke. Before you knew it, people were reeling in laughter. It was a Saturday, I can't forget. People were reeling in laughter. Pa, 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 pa. Now, the campus fellowship I, attend, I attended then wasn't pastored by a student. It was pastored by a, it, it's a full-time church. So that, well, after that Saturday, the pastor came to meet me. He said, you did very well on Saturday. You know what? I'm going to give you five minutes on Sunday service. I said, sir, I don't know what to say. He said, cook something up. So during the service, he said, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as we invite. I came up stage. I looked for Bible stories. I brought out humor out of it. That was how I started. Then on campus, I real, di, 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 different departments started inviting me, come and anchor our, uh, di, our association dinner, our end of year party. So I started charging. So I started making money from campus. I was charging, I was charging. Then it got to a point that I was even making more money from speaking as a student than the allowance they were giving me at home. Then I saw, I reflected that it's like this would be a good career path. However, I completed school. I completed school. Because my dad told me something. He said, hmm, anything you want to do in life is very good to have the basic university certificate so that nobody will tell you that it is out of frustration you are doing whatever you are doing. So I completed my degree, I practiced for a while, and um, I said, okay, while I was on campus in my third year, there were no audio CDs then. It was cassette, cassette. So I, I did a comedy, a, a comedy tape, audio, and I launched it on campus. I made serious sales. Okay, the first set was 1,000 copies. On the, launch, on the day I launched it, I sold 700. Yee. It was good money. Then I, I felt this is uh, a career path that I could choose as a side hustle. So I chose it, and that's how I found myself in comedy. It used to be previously that I was referred to as gospel comedian, but the fact still remains I do clean and godly jokes. The truth is a story, a joke, does not, have to, does not have to be vulgar, insulting, or derogatory before it is funny. It all has to do with the person, your value systems, what you stand for. And uh, my brand is known for ethical delivery in anything I do. You can't catch me doing anything vulgar or anything against good morals. I, I think uh, it has to do with the value of the individual. By the way, I'm a church boy, so if you read the Bible very well, there are a lot of humorous stories in the Bible, a lot of humorous stuff happens in church. All you need to do is pay attention. So, let me quickly show you a joke. Now, if you don't laugh, it's not because I'm not funny. Maybe issues of life, you've not collected your salary. All right, listen to this. Now, uh, when I was growing up, it was fun. When we were in primary one, no, when, when I was in primary three, uh, the teacher came to class and was like, students today, we're going to be constructing sentences. You know then in primary school, people that are intelligent, they sit in front. We that don't know anything, we sit at the back. I belong to the people that sit at the back. So the teacher called an intelligent girl in front. Uh, Cynthia, stand up. Make a statement with I. Cynthia was like, I am a girl. Class, clap for Cynthia. We clap for Cynthia. I was hiding. So the teacher looked at Cynthia. He said, Cynthia, can you make the statement longer? 
So say, say, um, you know girls, they can form, eh? Say, um, I am a girl, I go to school every day. Class, class for Cynthia, we class for Cynthia, I was hiding. The teacher looked at me, hey, you, you, stand up. I said, sir, he said, make a statement with I. Hmm. The easiest thing for me to do was to copy the girl. So I said, I am a boy. Class, clap for him. They clap for me. This year, not look at me again. I thought I had survived. And I said, hey, I wanted to sit down. He said, no, stand up. He said, so can you make the statement longer? I said, sir, make the statement longer. Meanwhile, I had forgotten what the girl had to, I am a girl. Young man, make the statement longer. I looked at my teacher. I said, I am a boy. You. <laughs> what motivates me in life? is number one i'm value driven i want to impact my world number two i hate to be irrelevant anywhere i am found i love to be relevant i love to be relevant so i seek ways to add value number three for people that come across me i don't want to leave them the same way they met, uh, they met me i don't want them to live the same way i want to drop something if it's an advice if it's a push and above all my drive is excellence. I hate mediocrity. So anything I want to do, I strive to do it at an excellent level. I tell people it's good to start small, but start small without mediocrity. Those are the things that drives me. Okay. Um, aside from being a comedian or doing comedy, which is just a minute aspect of my brand, I'm also uh, an inspirational speaker. In my life, I've spoken in over over 15 countries. Yeah, my message is I'm also a trainer. I am a trainer. I train corporates and individuals on workplace effectiveness and personal effectiveness and productivity. So, I have a clothing line, a shoe line actually. I love shoes because when I was growing up, I saw fat. I didn't make I, uh, my parents were conservative, so I couldn't afford good shoes. So I love shoes so much that I have my own shoe line. Even though it's pen, it's on it's on pend at the moment. I'm pending at the moment because we are in the process of expanding. It's called Dr. Shogo Collections. I have a blog for the shoes. They are, the shoes are made with African fab fabrics. I'm also an author. I write. I write almost every day. I host a series of online classes on human capacity development with people attending from over 10 to 15 countries at the same time. I love to speak, I love to encourage people. My message is hope, my message is you can do it. My message is if you don't like where you have move, you're not a three. I want to let you know something that all of us have a brain, but nobody, get, nobody gets paid for having a brain. You get paid for using your brain to solve a problem. Now, um, uh, public speaking for me, it's the core of what I do and everything I do revolves around speaking and human capacity development. Recently, I'm in Nairobi uh, at the moment and I just hosted a conference called From Ideas to Execution. The idea, the concept behind um, the conference is that there are a lot of people that have ideas but they have issues and difficulty in implementing their ideas, in executing their ideas. And life is about execution. Life does not uh, reward the talkers. Life rewards the doers. So the, uh, the target audience was uh, startups, people looking up to start a side hustle, people that uh, have businesses but they, they don't know how to create a structure and system. I had quite a lot of speakers that are, that, are, that are grounded and experienced in business. Uh, Robert Burali was around, uh, uh, Dennis Untumbi was around. Then I, there was a, lady, a young lady, 21 year old girl, she's in her third year in university that I discovered. Her name is Sherilyn Canini. She makes paintings on canvas, I mean canvas that we wear. Interesting and she has her own line and making money now. You don't need to graduate from school before you start making money. It is one of the problems of educational system in Africa. We are not taught. It's, it's even believed that if you think of making money while in school that it will distract your academics. But financial intelligence is different from educational intelligence. We need to uh, 
teach people financial intelligence right from the scratch. Also, the conference was an avenue for people uh, to collaborate, to network. It was well attended as well. This is what brought me to Nairobi and uh, you'll see some pictures of how the event went as I'm speaking. It was a glorious one. Now the concept for the conference is for it to be annual. At some point, I believe that we'll grow it to a stage that will sponsor people with good, lofty ideas. We'll be able to connect them with angel investors. But if you missed uh, from Ideas to Execution Conference 2018, 2019 is going to be bigger and better. It is something you don't want to miss at all. It is a game changer. I told, I, I told people during the conference there's a difference between uh, copying someone and modeling someone. If you copy, you might not uh, do it effectively because it is not about copying, it's about understanding the system behind the copy, what makes the copy work. That's modeling. So you need to know how to model your business from scratch and how to run your business without you being there. You might not, uh, your business might not, uh, you need to understand the business aspect of your, of your idea. A lot of people have ideas but they don't know the business aspect of the idea. That's why we have a lot of poor, talented people. Writing is a passion. I love to write, I love to write. As a matter of fact, there's none of my speaking engagement that I don't write. I write a lot. Then I read, I memorize, I internalize. I write every day on my social media page, on my uh, Instagram, I'm on Instagram at Dr. Shogo, D-R-S-H-O-G-O. So I wrote to a point that I, I knew when I got to the stage, I knew I was ripe to write a book. So my first book was released in December 2017, on my birthday, December 20th. It is called Dr. Shogo Speaks. It was a collection of my thoughts from my online classes and my speaking engagements, my, my original thoughts about life, about various aspects of life. To be a writer, you just have to write just the way if you want to be a swimmer, you have to swim. If you want to be a driver, you have to drive. So if you want to be a writer, you just have to write. Write, you don't have to strive for perfection. Perfection is a journey. Don't wait to be perfect before you decide to write. Then, I tell people there's a difference between talent and skill. Talent is raw. Skilled is, skill is a refined form of talent. So go, to, go for writing workshops, go for writing seminars, connect with other writers, exchange ideas, and there's no antidote to reading if you want to be a writer. Read, 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 and read until you find your own style. Stay tuned. Now, the problem of Africa is not peculiar to Kenya alone. The problem of Africa, one of the problems of Africa is unemployment. Simply because of our educational system, I realized that educational system in Africa as a whole is faulted because the educational system in Africa teaches us what to think. But in developed countries, educational system teaches them how to think. Now, because you have, we have been taught what to think, how to behave, there's already a limiting barrier placed in our mind that people, people tend not to think out of the box after school. We are supposed to be job creators if you don't find job create one there's something in you that you are good at had a touch of excellence to it get a business mentor start a business and employ others I, I, I know that I am not against being an employee but for a lot of people because of mental laziness they have employee mindset there's something in you that you can tap into you can employ people you can do it create jobs because if we have for instance uh, in us the economy of us is driven by smes the economy of us is driven by smes so as much as we can as much as we can let's encourage people to go into business in Kenya. let's give them an enabling environment let's make the process easy for them the economy of the nation we will we, we increase we become much more buoyant Right. Um, life is full of challenges and um, 
Without challenge, life will be boring. Honestly, without challenges, life will be boring. I've encountered my own fear of challenges from uh, disappointments to being discouraged from not having funds and um, betrayals from envy from backstabbing and um, you see all I know is that life is not a bed of roses your desire to succeed your desire to excel your desire to make impact and meaning in life should be stronger than any life challenge that come, comes across your way. I tell people, when life throws lime at you, don't just turn it into a lemonade, turn it into juice and say. In Nigeria, there's something we call pepper soup. When life shows you pepper, turn it to pepper soup and open a pepper soup joint. All right? So uh, challenges will come. It's also good to anticipate them. So when you anticipate, uh, you are not discouraged. You know that it is part of life. Uh, courage has been de uh, defined as not the absence of fear, but the ability to take steps despite the fear. Never give up on your dreams or your goals for any challenge in life. No, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. No way. Uh, read books, develop yourself, invest in yourself. So when you are equipped with the right knowledge on how you can overcome challenges when they come, you are not threatened, you don't freak out, you don't back out. Challenges, what doesn't kill us, makes us stronger, remember? So, embrace it as part of your journey. I've had, I've had issues with funding my ideas, but the brain, eh? God gave us this brain so you can move ahead in life. A head that is not thinking is a load to the body. When you think through every challenges of life, a way we come. Biggest achievement in life so far is a relative term because it it is in I don't know, but my most fulfilling moment so far right now is the grace to have hosted that conference in Nairobi successfully without being resident in Nairobi. A lot of people came, and the feedback has been very overwhelming and humbling that you left your zone because I had to leave my comfort zone. You see, if you want to do anything significant in life, don't stay in your comfort zone. The comfort zone is a killer of destiny. Stay out of your comfort zone. Break the box. Nothing significant, nothing relevant happens in comfort, comfort zone. So uh, being able to host this conference, meet new people, understand people dy dynamics and a new environment has been a very big achievement for me so far for now. It's the most recent. The, the conference was well put, there were no itches, the attendance was mwah. What else? I'm happy. Now my word, my word of advice to young people is success is not overnight. Every overnight success has a minimum of 10 years investment. The only thing you start from the top is a graveyard. Everything you must grow from top, uh, from bottom to top. Start small, but grow big. Nothing is instant. If it is instant, you won't be able to sustain it because you need to develop capacity for where you are going. You need to develop capacity for what you desire out of life. So keep it real. Don't give up. Life respects consistency. Money respects consistency. So don't give up and don't look for quick fix. Don't look for easy way. Don't look for shortcut. There's nothing called shortcut. All right, thank you for spending time with me on today's episode. If you want to follow me uh, on social media, I'm alive on Instagram as at Dr. Shogo, D-R-S-H-O-G-O, -O, at Dr. Shogo. On Twitter, at Dr. Shogo. I would love to connect with you. On Facebook, I have an online community. It is called Class of Dr. Shogo, all right? Just request to join and an admin will add you. My personal Facebook account is Oyeniji Shogo, O-Y-E-N-I-Y-I, -I -I, and S-H-O-G-O, -O, Oyeniji Shogo. So let's connect, let's bond, let's network, let's collaborate, and let's make Kenya a better place. Love you guys.
Tony Mochama, aka Smita, Princess Adi, and the Niger Coca Brother. Virtually everything that happens in this book is based on um, on, uh, on actual events. The violence in there. Yeah, it's, it's on so another level. It's so protracted.